Hey guys, this is Amber from NotableInc.com. Thank you so much for joining me today and for hopping along with us for the Alta New Educator Love and Friendship Block Hop. Be sure to follow along on the hop because there's lots of great prizes and the inspiration is incredible. I've seen a lot of the cards. We have a few new Alta New Educators and everyone is just so talented. Today, um, this two sets of cards, we're gonna be doing some no-line watercoloring with the indoor garden set, and then also some stencil techniques. So we'll go ahead and start with our no-line watercolor. And what I've done is I've gone ahead and done the layer stamping of these images on some watercolor paper. And then I'm just taking clean, clear water to the stamped image first, and then I'm coming in with some milk chocolate ink and that's also the charcoal suit ink from the gentleman's gray set over there so basically the stamped image is acting as an undercoating or underpainting as they say and so for this color combination here for the lighter color that's milk chocolate and almond butter and i'm just using a mixture of those two inks but you can see when you bring the water to the stamped image it smooths out that image because this is a rough watercolor paper your stamping isn't going to be consistent i mean i could have stamped it multiple times but i wanted to keep that underpainting pretty light so the for the outlines i stamped in vanilla cream and for the foliage i believe that's bamboo that i stamped in um, the lightest color from tropical forest so i'm doing the same thing with these i'm just putting down clean clear water first then a little bit of green and then i'll come in and i'll add some of the darker areas and i've slowed this down just a little bit this is um still sped up just a tad but just to give you an idea um of how to add those shadows. And even with those, I'm using a bit of clean, clear water. And then I love these brushes from the Silver Brush Company because the tip on them is so super pointy. You can do a lot of great detail work. So I went ahead and painted the, um, what is that? The succulents off screen and or off camera. And I went ahead and colored those because I didn't color them at home. I took them to one of my kids' practices. And what I'm doing here is I'm just adding some additional detail with color pencils. So these are polychromos pencils and I'm just adding some black detail in there. We'll go ahead and go back to a little bit of painting. I wanna show you how I painted these stems as well. So that is just a, um, I'm just going straight to the paper with the pigment. There I'm not doing any clean, clear water because I wanna keep those edges really nice and clean. I'm coming in with some Prismacolors here and I will list all of the colors that I used on my blog post in case you're interested in them, but really you kind of just pick the colors that you have in your stash. Um, you know, I use kind of like a, a bright yellow, a really bright green, a medium tone green, and then brown and black for my shading. And I'm just going, going in and creating creases. Um, I feel like the, this is the type of plant that has that large deep crease in the center of the leaf. So that's kind of what I'm creating here. So I just bring that down and I kind of look at the orientation of the leaf to see which way that's gonna go. In most cases, it's not gonna be completely down the center based on whatever perspective you're seeing the leaf from. So keep that in mind. Some of the leaves, like I drew this one, is kind of being upside down. It's kind of coming up from the stem. And then, so just kind of play with around with how you're bending the leaf, how you're drawing that, and whether it's in the center or offset. And you'll get some more realistic looking leaves there. So moving on to the background, what I envisioned was, this is the watercolor stripe stencil, and I wanted like a really light, light teal color here. So what I did is I mixed a little bit of the dew drops with the lightest color in the gentleman's gray uh, color family, uh, which is Silver Lake. And I just gently, gently um, ink blended those on. Here I'm mixing some Altenew embossing paste with those same two colors because what I decided, and you can see I've masked off my stencil here, what I'm creating is some 
ledges for these shelves to sit on. So I'm kind of imagining these like those molding ledges that you, you know, put on your wall, the, the shelves. Uh, that's kind of how I'm thinking of these. And I was amazed at, you know, I kind of just kept mixing and mixing until I felt like I had the right color. And you'll see when I take this off that the color matches really well with the ink blending that I did. So I was really happy with that. Um, so I'm kind of putting this on kind of chunky because I wanted some texture to it. I wanted there to be a noticeable difference between the ink blending and the embossing paste so that it would look like a shelf. So you can see I'm just kind of adding more texture to that. We'll peel it off. And when I went to take my photos of this, you couldn't see the shelves that I created. So then what I did is I ink blended some ink onto those shelves. So here it looks really great. I love how it matches. It's a really toned down color. Then I added some ink to the embossing paste just right on top of it. I ink blended it on and it turned way, way bluer. And I didn't like that as much, but you know, what are you gonna do? I still think it's a really pretty card. So moving on to our next card, I didn't show the stamping on this, but that's the Welcome Home stamp set. I'm using the same stencil. I die cut a piece of vellum and just temporarily adhered that to the stamping that we have in the middle. And I'm gonna ink blend right over that. So this is a technique I want to do again. So I have this in here just so you can see the technique, but because I'm incrementing such a light color, which I don't normally do, I normally have really bold, bright cards. It's unusual for me to do a really light and airy card like this, but do you see how the ink blending shows up on the vellum? I think that's such a cool look. So what I had initially thought I would do was pop up the vellum, but when I popped up the vellum, it really obscured the stamping so much, the distance between the vellum and the stamping, that I ended up taking the dimensional adhesive back out. So with the vellum not being popped up, you don't really see the ink blending on the vellum very much anymore. The other thing I did is I felt like the stripes were a little bare, so I took one of the detail layers from the Build-A-Flower Snapdragon and just stamped on a little bit of bamboo ink. I kind of second generation stamped it onto this to just add a little bit of texture in the background with a slight floral feel to it. I was definitely feeling out of my comfort zone with how light these cards were. Um, I have two more cards on this hop with tips for how to layer build a flower rose like a pro, so I'll link that in the, at the end so you can check that out. Be sure to leave me a comment. Let me know what you think of this video, these cards. Leave a comment on the blog hop so that you have a chance to win an all to new gift certificate. There's lots of amazing inspiration. If you are interested in continuing to build your card making skills, all to new has 20% off on all of the level one and level two all to new academy classes. So be sure to check that out at all to new if you haven't subscribed already and you liked this video, smash that subscribe button and hit the notification and thumbs up button. Thanks so much for stopping by and until next time, breathe, ink, inspire.